What's up guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about Supergirl season two episode titled The Darkest Place. So careful for spoilers, if you're not caught up with Supergirl this season, you've been warned, let's get into it. Okay guys, so what I usually do with my rant and reviews, as you guys know, is I'll go through and I'll pick out moments from the episode that stood out to me and I'll tell you what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and I am going to do that in this video. There are a few things that I have here on my notes that I am going to talk about, but something I want to talk about first, the most important thing that I think has been a problem throughout the whole season since it's come to the CW, is the usage of Supergirl as the star of her show. And this was one of the problems I had with season one. Along with a few other things, you know, I, th I thought some of the improvements that could have been made coming from CBS to the CW were the special effects. I think they've done a lot better with, you know, with that on CW than they did on CBS. I think the fight choreography has been a lot better. Some of the character interactions have been better. But something they have not fixed is Supergirl and making her the focal point of her own show. And this was a problem I had with Arrow in season four. I felt like the Green Arrow was not the star of his series. It was a bunch of people, a bunch of side characters you know, featuring the Green Arrow. And this feels like a show about the friends of Supergirl featuring Supergirl. And I think that's a problem. It's a problem for me. It's something that I think the show could really work on. And if you think about it this entire season, other than the stuff with Catco and Snapper Carr, Supergirl has not been the featured character, really. She's been a ensemble character or a team-up character. You know, at the beginning, we had Superman, who really stole the show from Supergirl. I think a lot of people would agree that Superman came in and at least had to share screen time with Supergirl to the degree of making it more of a team-up show. And that's fine. It was the kickoff for the season. I didn't really have a problem with that. Then mon came along. He's been a very big and important part of the show so far. We have Alex and Maggie with this love story that's taken up quite a bit of time on the episodes so far. Now we have this Guardian character with James and when, which is taking up a lot of time on the show. I just don't understand what they're trying to do. I mean, is this a show about Supergirl? It's called Supergirl, but we have so many other things going on. I'm just a little bit confused. I think the writers could do a better job of featuring Supergirl on a show about Supergirl. Is that too much to ask? You guys let me know in the comments. Is that too much to ask for me to want to see more of Supergirl being featured on Supergirl and less of her being inserted in scenes. Every time I feel like it's going to flip and we're going to get a whole episode about Supergirl, some other stuff happens. And this week is another example. And I really noticed this when I was taking my notes. I'm like, out of all the scenes this week, none of them to me really stood out as Supergirl-centric scenes. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the moments in this week's episode. Now, I talked about Alex and Maggie and their love story, and that seemed to be a big portion of this week's episode, as I expected it to be. A lot of you guys voiced your disapproval of this on my rant and review last week. You said you weren't too happy about uh, this love story for a multitude of reasons. I think I saw maybe five, ten different reasons why people didn't like it. Uh, but what I think is happening here is we don't have a love interest for Carr right now. Because yet again, she's not the focal point of the show. So this love story between Alex and Maggie is being thrown in as that love story for the viewers to watch. Because they want to hit that target demographic. There's a lot of fans of Supergirl that like the love stories. I'm not a big fan of love stories. We know that. We go through this every week with me. I don't really have a problem with the Alex and Maggie love story. The problem I do have with it is it's taking up so much time of the episodes. Um... And I don't think we're going to see much more of that, though. I do feel like this week they kind of quelled that a bit. And even though we are going to see it moving forward with Alex and Maggie, I don't think it's going to be as big a deal as it has been over these last two episodes. But Kara really is living this love story through these two characters in the sense that the writers made that love story just for that. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to last long because we did get to see mon -El, uh Seems like he's interested in Kara this week. He made a comment about the fact that he was curious if she was seeing anybody. Then we had this long pan out shot of him looking at her. So I do believe that's where we're going with the show. And speaking of mon -El, we saw him captured last week by Cadmus. And this week he was still locked up in their facility. And this is kind of interesting. Um, he got shot by the director of Cadmus this week. And we talked about the lead allergy <laughs> or lead poisoning. Um, and I'm assuming at first when I heard it, I thought, okay, this must be a... They must be using this as sort of a tie to the fact that people can be shot. 
and he's not Supergirl, so he can be shot just like every other person. I thought that's kind of what they were going with there. It was sort of a metaphor. But um, then we see that he is getting sick from the lead much quicker than an average person would, would get sick with that. We really don't know. Okay, to be completely honest, I don't know how long he was locked up. He could have been sitting there for two days. I don't know. We don't know. No sense of time there. But I'm going to assume that the allergy to lead for Daxamites is a nod to the comic books. And, um, you know, we, which is kind of weird because he was standing right next to Guardian last week, whose suit is comprised of almost entirely lead. So Supergirl couldn't see through it. And he didn't seem affected by that. So I, I'm confused. Maybe a writing era. Maybe he has to be shot by bullets to be affected by lead. You know, I don't know. I guess we'll see how that's going to work out <laughs> in coming episodes. Um, let's talk about James and the Guardian for a moment. So this week we had a copycat vigilante out there shooting and killing people that the Guardian was actually interacting with. And I mean, I feel like this is a story we've seen before. We've seen these kinds of stories where people are vigilantes on these shows. They go out, they think they're doing good, and then something happens and they're looked at as a bad guy and the cops come after them. I mean, but these shows, they share writers, they share showrunners, they share producers. I mean, these kinds of stories are going to continue to happen as long as we have these crossover staffs and people in the background making these shows happen. Um, and as far as The Guardian goes, I'm a little bit confused, okay? And I do want to talk about this for a moment. So... Wynn did not make this suit specifically for James. He might have tweaked it a little bit, but when he was talking to James, he made it sound like he was already working on this suit. So was this a project that he was already working on at the DEO? Was this something that he was supposed to be doing that Alex may have known about in the background? And if so, wouldn't she have noticed, hey, by the way, this project that Wynn was working on, you know, now there's somebody running around wearing this uh, prototype suit that Wynn was creating. I'm just going out on a limb here saying that somebody from the DEO should have known something about this. He wasn't hiding the suit away. It was just out in plain sight. It uh, and a, looked like a armory of types with gear in it. It just was sitting there. So I'm not sure. Um, and let's keep track of, uh, let's talk about the lies that are going on at Supergirl. Because you guys know how I feel about lies, all right? So we had James and Wynn lying to Kara because they were afraid that she would not approve of James going out. Uh, and fighting crime on the streets. And we had James lying to all the people at CatCo because of, you know, him being the head of CatCo. He didn't really want that to get out. Then uh, Wynn slips up and tells Alex that James is the Guardian. And then Wynn, I mean, then Alex continues to lie to Kara and lying to James about knowing that James is the Guardian. And all of them are still lying to Kara. <laughs> it's just... So many lies, so many lies going around. I just can't keep up with all of them. But uh, either way, I'm just a little bit confused that this suit and all this tech that Wynn was creating for James didn't show up missing at the DEO. It's a little bit strange to me. And real quick, I want to talk about Martian Manhunter and Ms. Martian. They had some moments this week as well. The fight scene between them and the alleyway was dope. I had a lot of fun watching it. It was really short though, and that's because the CGI budget is so high for these two characters. And I, I kind of laugh it off because I can almost predict when they're going to transform from their regular form into another form. Say, oh, well, this is the form I prefer. Well, no, that's the form that the writers and showrunners prefer because it's cheaper. But, <laughs> you know, either way, the fight scene was, was very dope. I had a good time watching it. But let's talk about this blood transfusion thing really quick, all right? Um, historically, when a Martian transforms, they transform at the most basic levels, meaning that their blood types would also transform with them. But on the TV show, it doesn't look like that's the case. So the blood transfusion that Ms. Martian gave to Martian Manhunter is uh, transforming him from a green Martian uh, into a white Martian because of some experiments, I guess, they did on Mars to sort of transform the uh, green Martian population into white Martians. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a total mental transformation. Like when he transforms, he's going to forget who he was as a green Martian and become a white Martian. And if that's the case... I think that would be something that, that Ms. Martian might have wanted to tell him anyway, but it looks like she was trying to skip town for whatever reason. Uh, again, this is kind of weird. The narrative in this is really weird. I, I don't I don't know if I'm enjoying this dynamic between the two of them. But now that he knows she's a white Martian and they have her locked up in the DEO, um, it's going to make karaoke night at the Alien Bar really weird. <laughs> have you seen our bartender? You know, you guys are really good friends. Oh, yeah, the bartender. Yeah, she's locked up in our government facility where we harbor alien criminals. <laughs> it's like going to be really weird. 
I don't know how I feel about this, but we'll see where this goes. Um, I'm assuming she's just going to become part of the team or they'll be like, oh, you can go free. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's talk about the big thing that happened this week. And that was Cyborg Superman. Now, we talked about this in my rant and preview and how I was curious if he was going to actually be Hank Henshaw like he is from the comics or if he was going to be Jeremiah, uh, Alex and Kara's, well, Alex's father, Kara's uh, foster father, um, and how they were going to make that happen. I hope we were going to see Jeremiah. We did, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's talk about Cyborg Superman for just a second. Um, I did enjoy the way he looked in the episode. I thought they did a pretty good job of making him look like Cyborg Superman, at least in the sense that they made him half human and half cybernetic, which, you know, he's Cyborg Superman, so at least he should look that way. One thing I was upset about was he called himself Cyborg Superman. And the reason why I'm upset about this is what was the context for this? Why would he call himself Cyborg Superman? He wasn't wearing a Superman suit. He wasn't out pretending to be Superman. Like he wasn't flying around the city taking up the mantle of Superman, which is, as we know, that is what happened in the comics, which is why he was, in fact, Cyborg Superman, because he was taking up the mantle of Superman. What reason did the real Hank Henshaw, who had no ties to Clark Kent or Superman, what reason would he have to call himself Cyborg Superman? I just don't see the connection there. And I tried really hard. I'm like, oh, God, maybe this, maybe that. But nothing made that stand out to me as being a reason for him to call himself Cyborg Superman. Now, if this was a female character pretending to be Supergirl, like the Bizarro episode, and she called herself Cyborg Supergirl, I would totally get it. But just randomly calling himself Cyborg Superman, he could have called himself Cyborg Martian Manhunter. He could have called himself, you know, Cyborg Captain America. You know, I mean, just saying, he could have called himself Cyborg anything. Why Superman? It was just really weird to me. I know he was supposed to be Cyborg Superman, and maybe someone at the DEO or Supergirl could have named him Cyborg Superman, but just calling himself Cyborg Superman, I'm nitpicking, okay? Just deal with it for a second. I'm nitpicking. It was just really weird to me. It didn't make much sense. The story of Hank Henshaw becoming Cyborg Superman in the comics had a lot of stuff going on. It made sense for him to be Cyborg Superman, and, and this week's episode really didn't make any sense to me, all right? So I'm not really sure, you know, why they did that. It was a little strange. All right, as far as Jeremiah goes, at the end of the episode, we see him let Monel and Kara go, and then he doesn't leave with them. So I do think that he's working with Cadmus. I believe he was instructed by Cadmus to release them because there was really no reason for him not to just leave with, with the two of them. There really wasn't. There was no good excuse. And I'm really surprised that Kara didn't pick up on, why are you not leaving with us? Like, this doesn't make any sense. But she just doesn't care, doesn't mind. I mean, yeah, they were running for their lives, but she didn't really put two and two together and say, maybe he's not telling us the truth. So I don't know. It's gonna That's going to pay off later on in the season. I'm sure we'll see more about that. Okay, so for me, this my final thoughts about this week's episode, um, it was okay at moments. It had its moments. I did like seeing Cyborg Superman. I love the mentions from mon about the whole lead poison thing that was going on with him in reference to the Daxamites. Oh yeah, there was a mention of Thanagar, which is about Hawkman and Hawkgirl. I mean, there was a lot of little Easter eggs in this episode, but I can't give it a pass on that. <laughs> those were all cool, but it was all just dialogue. Um, so for me, yeah, those are great. Those are cool. You know, not, not perfect or whatever. I know a lot of people are saying this is their favorite episode this season. It's not my favorite episode. I'm getting kind of fed up really with the lack of focus on Supergirl. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all this into account and I'm going to give this week's episode a 6 out of 10. That's going to be my final score, 6 out of 10. I really need them to focus on Supergirl. I need her to be the main character of the show. Um, I need a lot of these side stories to be condensed and tightened up. The James Guardian stuff is okay. They're spending a lot of time on it. The Alex and Maggie stuff is okay. They're spending a lot of time on it. If anything, any side character that I'm really interested in seeing more from, it's mon -El. I'd like for them to focus on that. And I do think when we come back from the mid-season break, we will get more mon -El. Maybe, hopefully, we'll see. Anyway, so did I miss anything? Anything you guys enjoyed this week that I didn't talk about? Agree or disagree with any of the comments I made in this week's episode? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, give me your score 
on a scale of one to 10. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I make videos like this all week long, all month long about the TV shows and movies we love. Also, there's gonna be some boxes popped up on the screen now. Go ahead and click them. Make your life a lot better by listening to me ramble about more TV shows. <laughs> but that's all I got for you guys today. Take care, have a great day, have a great week, and I will catch you later.